I ain't love you first, nah, but nah. you first love me. Woo. Come on, in my heart I cursed you, yeah. but you set me free. Oh. I gave you no reason to give me new seasons, to give me new life, new breathing. Nah. But you hung there bleeding, you died for my lies and my cheating, my lust and my greed. And what is a man huh? that you mindful of him? What and what do I have to deserve this love? Hey. Now let's look at some testimonies. This is from Keith, an American, American who lived in Davao City for a while. He was a very important G12 member. I, I can't give more details about him to protect his privacy and safety, maybe even. G12, he was a, a Group 12 member directly off the pastor. That makes him very important in, in the G12 structure. G12 is all about G12. It's about being successful according to the G12's definition of success. It has a cookie cutter mentality, everybody ministering in the same way. And there is a hierarchy. Those who produce the most disciples are the most respected and elevated over those who are more mature. They are a network marketing technique that sells a product of fulfillment through success and being a leader. But the problem is not everybody is called to be a leader and they end up leading poorly. Then it is common for people to call their leader mother or papa, even if they are around the same age or even younger. Then once I was visiting a large G12 youth service at the Happy Church in Pagadina. At the end of the service they did an altar call for salvation. After praying with the people who came forward and allowed them to return to their seats, they began promoting their G12 cell groups. The youth leader actually said, and I quote, Go to cell or go to hell. Never mind that they just did an altar call for salvation only minutes earlier. Now he made it seem like attending a G12 cell was a criteria for eight obtaining or maintaining salvation. Well, Weird things happened among the G12. Back when I was single, it was suggested to me by one of the church leaders that I begin dating a certain girl because she got her 144. Another story is that this same girl who was touted as a G12 superstar within the church was part of the 12 of the pastor's wife. She became so burned out and had a falling out with the pastor's wife because she insisted that this girl diligently attend every single church event. On top of the fact that she needed to conduct her own weekly cell group, attend her leader's cell group, and often attend the cell groups of her trial to help them build their network. She had no time for anything else and decided to leave, which brings me to another observation. The G12 church, churches lose people nearly as fast as they gain them. Within two years I saw nearly the entire congregation of the church change, aside from my key leaders. I'm not an outgoing person, so for me it is an effort to go out of my way to meet new people. After several years of attending this G12 church, I managed to get to know a good percentage of the members. Then I went to visit the States for about five months, and when I returned, I looked around to the people I knew, and most of them were gone. And those who leave are labelled negatively as if their fleshly attitude got the best of them, causing them to leave. But if you don't easily notice the people leaving because they are too busy celebrating the people coming and patting themselves on the back. I won't read that one. Just quickly. Just near me. In the G12 group, you were to share everything in your life with your leaders, your sins, your aspirations, and your daily problems. You're expected to get your leaders' consent on life decisions. If the group decided you were a troublemaker because you had doubts of the program and questioned it openly, you were told Satan is talking to you and you had to rebuke his thoughts. You were discouraged from reading the scriptures independently and interpreting them in a way that might contradict the pastor's teachings. Your confession to your leaders could be made public later so as to humiliate you and put you in your place. This way order could be maintained and you would be discouraged from questioning the teachings. This even though they promised your confessions would be an absolute confidentiality. Leaving the group is difficult as the church and groups become your life and they cut you off from all other friends outside the system. They could threaten you with the loss of your salvation for leaving, and at the very least, you were told that God would no longer bless you. It was a system of manipulations and controls designed to keep you in the church. That's from David Chonier, a Guatemalan G12 pastor, formerly. Okay, this is Ice. This is Ethan's girlfriend. 
She is a former G12 member. Next, please. Oh, no, no, we're going to read this. <laughs> Have to be. It's not a kiss and tell. Don't worry. Ethan and her organised me to get this. There are a lot of reasons why I left G12. The last straw would be that I was fed up hearing about and talk about the vision of numeric growth and more disciples than actually talking about God. In fact, there was very little God said in this and their preaching. They spoke a lot about prosperity, about how God would bless us when we give even more than we have nothing to give. I had to be in church almost every day because if I was not, they would think that I'd lost my passion and I'd backslid. There's also a lot of promiscuity among the members, which appalled me, sexual immorality. And the leader who disciplined me could not do much in terms of helping me grow in my faith, because there was very little doctrine, a lot of almost exaggerated hermeneutics, that emphasizes your worth rather than God's worth or His glory. It was very man-centered and very charismatic. I learned how to speak in tongues there. How can you be taught to speak in tongues? It's an anointing gift from the Holy Spirit. If He anoints you, you will speak in tongues. You don't have to be taught to do it. That's walking in the flesh. Even joined the charismatic conventions that last for hours with people on the ground, me included, falling down in the Spirit. No biblical basis for it. Believing that's in the Holy Spirit, even at the same moment there was demon possession going on. I can bear witness to that. In a moment, I'll just briefly talk to you about the G12 service that Ethan and I went to a while ago. It's Jesus is not a means to an end. No. The gospel is he came to redeem us from sin. And that is the message forever Never I'll yell. Down. If you're living your best life now, you're headed for hell. Talk to him. Joel Osteen. Paul Steve Jones. Let him know. Crap of Olive is a Paul Steve Jones. Well, to well. Betty Hinn is a Paul Steve Jones. I know they're popular, but don't let them deceive ya. Talk to him. T.D. Jakes is a Paul Steve Jones. Count the truth. Joyce Meyer is a Paul Steve Jones.